In this video, we will cover interactive feature recognition, simulation, and post-processing inside of SOLIDWORKS CAM. Now that we've created our program, under our operation tree, we can see all of our tool paths. But maybe we want to simulate this program. We want to see how this is going to look on the machine. So we'll go ahead and choose Simulate Toolpath from our SOLIDWORKS CAM tab in the Command Manager. And inside this simulation, we can actually see the simulate against the stock material that we set up. So there's two different simulation modes. There's Tool Mode as well as Turbo Mode. We're going to use Tool Mode first. And you'll notice that we've got a play option below here in our navigation settings. This allows us to play to whatever's in our drop down. So whatever we have selected here, let's say for example, the next tool path, we can see the tool path running through this program. So if we press the play button here, we can actually see the tool cutting that material away. We also have a speed slider that is just below this so that we can go ahead and turn the speed down to see the next tool path. We can also speed up the slider as it's playing. And then we can also choose to play this to the very end of the program. This will show us our total simulation. If we go back to the beginning using the go to start button, we can also use the turbo mode and play to the very end. This will just run to the very end of the program and we can see a small simulation of exactly what that's going to look like. You will notice that the turbo mode is a little more jagged looking than the actual tool mode. That is because of the quality settings under our options. So if we go into our cam simulation options under the options section, we can see that our simulation options show us our tool mode, turbo mode, and comparison mode speed versus quality sliders. So we can change those options in here. If we're running tool mode or turbo mode and we play to the very end, there is also a display option that allows us to compare the finished model to the actual CAD model. So what we're trying to machine versus what we actually have machined. If you look under the display options, this button is called show difference. If we click on that, we can actually see in different colors based on what the tolerance we've set under our simulation options, what's left over and what can still be machined. The blue areas are what still needs to be machined. If you do see any red or orange areas, that means that the tool is actually gouged into the part in some way. So this shows us just blue, so we haven't gouged into any areas of the part, and we just need to clean up the areas that are left over. So if we choose the green check mark on our simulation, we can actually see on the CAD model that we've got a whole bunch of different chamfers that need to be added into this program. So one way to do this is to add the feature in ourself. So that's called interactive feature recognition. So we're going to come back into our feature tree and we'll add that feature in ourself. So we'll go into our mill part setup one. So the setup that we've got set for this particular program, we can add multiple setups in. So if there were any features on the bottom of the part that we would need to cut after this initial setup, we could add that second setup in and the extract machinable features or automatic feature recognition would find that for us. In this case, we're going to add it to our first setup. So mill part setup one, we'll go ahead and add in our new feature. So once this is highlighted, you'll see that we have the feature list in the command manager. We can go ahead and choose our two and a half axis feature from here. Or again, we can use the right click menu and add in our two and a half axis feature from the actual setup itself. In this window, you'll see a list of a whole bunch of different feature types that we can add in. If we're going to add this chamfer feature to the inside profile of any of these features here, that would be a pocket feature. If we're going to add it to the outside profile, so we'll do this outside feature first, this is going to be a boss feature. So we'll choose boss, and then we need to select the geometry. So we're going to use edges, and we're going to convert them to a loop, so that we only need to select one edge, and it should loop all the way around for us. So we'll select the top edge of this chamfer. It loops all the way around, and then we'll go into our end condition and tell it how far this feature needs to go from that position. So end condition here, we've got a blind direction of 10 millimeters. That should work. Again, it just needs to be below the bottom edge of this chamfer. 
So we could also select the bottom face of the part. So you can see as soon as I select that, this end condition chooses up to face. So again, doesn't matter where we choose because we're going to specify the actual length in the chamfer settings in the toolpath. The strategy, the machining strategy that we've selected is finish. This is going to just give us a contour mill toolpath and then we'll just change the tool to whatever we want to chamfer this with. We'll go ahead and choose OK and then we can generate the actual feature. So I'm not going to choose generate operation plan from the top because that would generate the whole program. We just want to generate this one feature. So I'm going to right click on the feature itself and we'll choose generate operation plan. We are going to generate the toolpath and then we'll make some changes as this isn't exactly what we want to do with this toolpath. So we'll right click on the toolpath and choose edit definition and this opens up our toolpath settings. So inside here, the first thing that we want to do is change the tool. So we want a chamfered tool in order to cut the chamfer. So I'm going to go into my tool crib and I'm going to select some kind of chamfered tool with a 90 degree tool tip. So the very bottom here, we've got a few different tools available. Um, what I want to do is I actually want to use a countersink tool. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a countersink. So I'll choose add find the tool type that I'm looking for. So we're looking for the countersink tools. And then I want to make sure that I've got a 90 degree tool tip on this and that the tool is large enough to cut the actual chamfer. So I'll select this 20 millimeter countersink with the 90 degree tool tip. We'll choose OK. And then I'm going to select that tool and press the select button in order to use that for my tool path. And yes, I want to replace the corresponding holder as well. So that's going to work for this feature. Then we're going to go into our contour tab and we're going to turn on chamfer machining. So this is how we can chamfer a part. We'll go ahead and select the length of the chamfer. So this was five millimeters. And then the clearance is how far we want the tool tip to go past the edge of the actual chamfer. So that's going to be one millimeter in this case. The feature edge is either apex which means we didn't model the actual chamfer into the part, so we would just select an actual edge. Or we have the outer edge option, and this is when we've modeled the actual chamfer into the part, we're going to select that top edge. So we'll go ahead and press the preview button, and you can see our toolpath has been added in. So there's our chamfer toolpath, we'll press OK, and then we can simulate this program again with the chamfer. So we'll go ahead and press simulate toolpath and then we can play through to the end. So I'm going to use tool mode again and just press play. So there's our chamfer and we've added that in interactively. We could go ahead and add the rest of the tool paths in, but once we've finished creating this program and we're happy with all of the settings that we've chosen, we can go ahead and post process this. To post process your program, you're going to choose the post process button from the command manager. We're going to choose where we want to save this. So I've created a G code folder. I'm going to save this as my file name. And then we can also choose what type of file we want to save this as. Your post processor should determine this file type, but if it does not, you can easily choose a different one. So I'm creating an NC code. I can go ahead and press save. It'll bring up my post process window. And in here, I can choose my options to open this G code file in my SOLIDWORKS CAM NC editor. This will allow me to make changes to the code once it's been posted, as well as to see the back plot of the actual G code simulation. We'll play through the post process and it shows our code being created. Once it's finished, we'll press the green check mark and this should automatically open up our G code editor.